CBS Sports Radio host Damon Mendelar joins us now. Good morning, Damon. Yay. Happy New Year. How we doing? Happy we are doing Thank great. You. Thanks for being with us. I know this guy. I, I know this guy. <laughs> Good stuff. All right, Damon, let's talk about the Patriots. They ended the 2018 season on a high note, beating the brakes off the New York Jets. The months prior, however, more of a or a medium note, a low note, not great, but also not an issue since they still earned themselves a bye for the ninth straight season. Tom Brady says he knows the Patriots will have to be at their very best heading into the postseason. This time of year is just figuring out a way to get the job done. You know, there's there's a lot of good football teams playing right now. You know, some teams have played better early in the year. Some teams have played better late in the year. And, you know, this time of year, it's you don't play a good game, and that's your season. And you're watching other teams move on. The awareness is heightened, and the focus is heightened, the execution needs to be that way. And uh, you know, we're we have a big challenge. Whoever we play is gonna be a great football team. We're you know, we're not gonna be able to afford anything less than our best. All right, Damon, it's gonna be a bit of an uphill road, I think, for the Patriots, despite all the success they've had. How slim is the Patriots' margin of error this postseason? Extraordinarily slim. I would say the only reason I gave them any chance to go to the Super Bowl is because they got the bye. Look, in the Super Bowl era of Belichick and Brady, they've never played Wild Card Weekend and gotten to the Super Bowl. What did that tell you? They've got to get the rest. They've got to get home field advantage. They've got to play at Gillette Stadium where quirky, interesting, scary, spooky things tend to happen sure. to opponents. Headsets go out. It's and, interesting yeah. how that always seems to happen. So that's the only reason that I say that they can make it is because they get the bye. And with the Chiefs, you never know. If they lose a divisional round game, which they are certainly prone to do over the course of their history, the Patriots suddenly host both games of the playoffs, and then we see them in the Patriots potentially in the Super Bowl again. But this Patriots team, this is fool's gold at the end of the season. Week 16, week 17, they beat up on a couple of rookie quarterbacks, a couple of bad AFC East divisional opponents, and went out in style against a coach that's not coming back in Todd Bowles. So if you think that the Patriots got healthy suddenly, I think you're whistling past the graveyard. The Patriots truly are the team that struggled against the Steelers, that got blown up by the Lions, that got blown up by the Titans, that got blown up by the Jaguars. They're just not the same team they have been in recent years. And this reminds me, I was covering the Patriots in Boston in 2009 when they ended up going 10 and 6 and losing the wild card round of the Ravens. That was a season earmarked by a lot of mile markers over the course of the season where you said, this doesn't feel like the Patriots. They had a couple of guys, Adalia Thomas, who Bart knows very well, and Randy Moss show up late to practice. There was a snowstorm late in the season. Belichick sent them all home, said, don't even come to practice. And that became kind of a big deal, like, wow, what's going on? This stuff never happens in Patriot land. And I feel the same way. There's not the same type of friction with the coaching staff, but there was a sense all that year in 09, uh, this, this team just isn't right. And they lost in the wild card round, and it just felt like, okay, they've got to reset, and they did after that. That was the last season to me that made them feel this vulnerable. And this, and just the numbers, that's the last season they had this many losses in a year. That's the last season Correct. that Brady was this statistically mediocre in a year. There's a lot. You, The case for the Patriots is a simple one. They're undefeated at home. They, they are guaranteed to play at least one, and if they get past that one, maybe both playoff games at home. And in a conference where seemingly nobody's got playoff experience, like look at who those other quarterbacks are. You have Rivers and Luck on the as the five and the six seed, but... Watson and Mahomes Jackson. and Lamar Jackson. They have a guy who has more experience than basically the entire, not basically the rest of the field combined times two. I, that's the case. But if you're just watching them, there isn't really a great case. If you're just watching them, the case is ah, it's the NFL playoffs. Anything can happen. They they don't do anything great. That's their biggest weakness. Is Their biggest weakness isn't like the Chiefs, where they have a glaring weakness of defense. Their biggest weakness is you game plan for the Patriots, and nothing jumps off the pages. Well, this scares us. We have to make sure we stop this. I thought that would be Gronk. It hasn't been Gronk all year. They lost Josh Gordon. There's no real it's difference maker. Brady. It's not even Brady. Now, Brady will always scare you to a degree because he's the greatest quarterback of all time. I don't think we're going to disagree no, no. on that greatest well, of all Joe time Montana, discussion. But never sure. But um but they if they didn't if they didn't have the jerseys on, they would look like the longest shot in the AFC playoff field right now. 
But what scares me is they, they have versatility. And they've been together for so long. So you think about Bill Belichick, you think about Tom Brady, what they can do is make you fight left-handed. So they're going to take away your best weapon, what you do well. And you have to be able to say, okay, I'm going to be able to counterpunch. And, you know, it's really the game within the game, the chess pieces that you have to be able to move when you want to try and come out and change your game plan. The teams that I, I believe has always beat the Patriots, and they had two game plans going in. They had the first half things, and then they had the things that they adjusted to in the second so half. That's what the Jags couldn't right, do last year. To keep them off balance, because what, what we know that Bill Belichick and Tom Brady does well is they understand the situation. They understand, you know, they'll get you with a trick play, they'll try and score before the half, they'll try and come out and get up by two and force you to press. And then especially when you look at this young field of young quarterbacks, if they have those early mistakes where Bill can set a trap for you and you can fall for it, will you be able to recover from that? Because in the playoffs, the the clock moves so fast. Everything is sped up in your heart rate and in the in the whole atmosphere. And you have to get past the mystique of what it is to play in Gillette Stadium. It is, can be intimidating. Is experience a big enough factor where it could, you know, sort of make up for whatever they're lacking on offense or defense? I mean, we talk all the time about how the Chiefs have it all in this mm -hmm. offense, except no experience. I mean, do you think that's enough to hold them back and experience is enough to propel the Patriots forward? Yes, because the Patriots have a very obvious game plan for them themselves. Do not beat ourselves, let the other team beat themselves. And that seems to happen all of the time. And they're really good at this. They will not turn the football over, they won't make mental miscues, they won't miss tackles or assignments, and that means you've got to be perfect. And especially at Gillette Stadium, it makes it really hard on opponents that haven't been there before. History, though, also tells us the Patriots are not winning the Super Bowl this year. We have not had a team lose a Super Bowl and come back to win one the following year since 1972, the undefeated Dolphins. Oh, wow. That's the last time this has happened. What does that tell us? It took historically perhaps the greatest team ever, at least one of them, to overcome what the emotional down is after you go all the way to the Super Bowl and then lose it and then try to come back and do it again. The Patriots history tells us they're, they're not nearly as good as the 72 Dolphins. They're good, but they're just gonna be the beneficiary of a very inexperienced AFC and a couple of home games potentially, but I don't see them getting to Atlanta. But the other thing that has to concern you if you're a Pats fan is they had a few moments this season where they could have righted the ship, where they they where it looked like as long as we win this game, we're gonna be the two seed and we're gonna be okay. And they couldn't win that game. Now they got the two seed anyway, because Houston down the stretch tripped up a couple times unexpectedly. The loss to Philly, a loss to India a couple weeks prior to that. But the 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 Dolphins game was the Patriots making a mistake that they typically don't make. And then they got a reprieve and they got the Steelers game the next week. And they made one play the entire game on a busted coverage to Chris Hogan. Like, I would have more faith in the Patriots, even if they hadn't gotten the two seed, if down the stretch it had all come together. It didn't all come together. That even the Bills game they didn't play very well in. Now, the Jets game they played spectacularly. I will give them all the credit. But that was a lot about the opponent and a lot about the venue and a lot about guys getting ready for the offseason. The Patriots have had opportunities this year to say, oh, they're figuring it out. Like a few years ago when I thought the defense was a disaster and then by December it's like, oh, in December, number one scoring defense in football. They haven't shown that to me. Maybe they'll, maybe they'll make me look stupid this year. Maybe it's gonna be like, oh my God, you picked against the Patriots. I don't think they're good enough. I don't think they're talented enough. It's gonna be about the matchups, right? Because I can see a guy like Lamar Jackson going in there, maybe having some pivotal fumbles, some turnovers, sure. things of that sort, which can get that momentum. And then you look up like, how do we lose to this team? I can see Deshaun Watson doing the same. They won't lose, I don't think, to one of the younger quarterbacks. I think who they should fear, like I said, who I believe is going to be in the Super Bowl, is going to be that four, fifth, and sixth seed. You know, I know that sixth seed, you know, that. So Colts, Chargers, Ravens, right. are you think the three best teams? Be, in this only term. because Harbaugh doesn't fear you know, the Pats, and, and they understand they have a history of being successful. They know how to beat them, and also the veteran quarterbacks, I think, can outdo Tom Brady. I don't know if Mahomes can, can come up to it. They've already lost to him well, this year, and I don't know if Deshaun Watts can step up They've either. already lost to him this and, year as well. And, and Watt becomes a non-factor. I don't know what they have on J.J. Watt. I don't know if he's ever sacked Tom Brady in his career. But the Chiefs and Texans lost really close against the Patriots. And remember, Deshaun almost went up there last year and beat them at Gillette Stadium. Yeah. It can be done by those And guys. the Chiefs had beat them the previous couple years right. once in Gillette. No Stick defense, around, though. do another segment? Let's do it, yeah. Because I hold all the cards and I made that decision. <laughs> Coming up, the latest strange twist with the Pittsburgh Steelers.